Welcome back to the intersection South by East. Today we've got this uh, Twitter video by uh, William Murphy, and it's an interesting one. Let's let's jump into it. Okay. No, no, no. I saw something else. Don't do it. Don't. Don't do it. Don't. You don't know. You ain't never been to the club. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. I, I, I. All right. There, there's a there, there's a couple of interesting things in that clip. The first one is I don't. I was pointing to this earlier in the clip. I don't know if you saw that they had two big screens to the side of the stage where he could see people posting either like in a, a live or on Instagram or. Mm -hmm. So they were saying they had a live feed going. So he was reacting. So, to the live feet. No, I didn't right, see that. See that? Oh, no, I see it. Yeah. I was wondering what that was. So that you can see live like on a you have two different social media platforms where they have going live for this event and that they are responding and, and while they're on stage, people are coming and he's so <laughs> So that's the first Ooh. okay. So that's the first thing. No, that's the second thing. The first thing is, when he opens this thing, uh, Christians, why do we do this? So um, I remember being, you and I both were in uh, a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't for the current church that we're at now. We were both mm -hmm. in a meeting. Yeah. And we were asked this question because the meeting that we used to attend, the person who led the meeting always wanted to do kind of an engaged question. And they asked, uh, it was a simple question. What TV show are you currently watching? Almost mm -hmm. every individual in the room, and this, this is all Christians, mm -hmm. started with, well, I don't usually watch a lot of TV. <laughs> the disclaimer. And I'm like, fam, no one is going to judge you for watching TV. That's the no. point of the question. It's just a right. fun it's, question. Yeah, we're supposed to just engage together. And, and, yeah, and that's say, it. like, you, most of us are watching some kind of TV. Something. And the person just asks, what are you watching? Right. Netflix, Hulu, Roku, but, something. <sighs> But so often, and this is what makes us seem fake at times, we See. have to put disclaimers on statements. Like when he opens up, well, I ain't never been, been to, the, to club. the club. Well, okay. Well, if you've never been to the club, then why are you trying to use club why, things? Why are you pulling illustrations from the club? From because, somewhere that you've never been. Illustrations are supposed to be for the purpose of and, relating to people. And that's the first dangerous step. If you can't relate to it, or you don't really know there. what it's about. Or you don't know what it's about. Don't go there. Because there is great danger in this illustration overtaking mm -hmm. the message that you're trying to convey. And all people will remember is the illustration, the illustration. That, that we roll on. Then so that <laughs> so that's why we get to the second part of just the church I lead has a social media presence. Mm -hmm. And we're not looking at social media while we're giving the word. And like, it's you not know a what? guiding factor for what we now, do. It's, now, it's, it's to share what God has already given us, what we're already working through, share the story of what's happening. It's not supposed to guide the direction of where we go. Here's what I will say. When we, when we did live stream our messages, and we have reasons why we stopped live streaming, and we share those with the body. Mm -hmm. We do share them afterwards online. Right. But we, when we did live stream, we did have a team of people who interacted with those who were um, viewing online and engaging that way with the body. And we did that because we wanted it to be more than, we believe that the gathering of the body is supposed to be more than something that you consume. Yep. It's something that you actively participate in. Yep. And so we wanted a team of people 
who help to shepherd our own line uh, portion of our body. Yes. And there was reasons why we even wanted to stream it because we had some people who couldn't make it in. Yeah, it's and then all about we made some shifts yeah. on that, and we just so that's a deal, yeah. right? So I'm not saying you churches shouldn't be active online. That, that would be hypocritical no. because no, we no. we totally leverage that platform to be able to minister to people. And I'm I'm questioning like, do we do me as I'm giving the actual word like. Uh, yeah, I just... I, and I man, think the a... proof is in the fruit. Like, if he was... I wouldn't necessarily react to something coming in online as I was trying to give the word because I wouldn't want that to... Hopefully, I've already studied the word and I have something that God wants to give to the people. I wouldn't want that to be... I wouldn't want to be distracted from that by whatever's coming in online. So that's the first reason why I wouldn't want to do that. Um, the second reason is, like... I think, or the second thing I would like to say about that is this. If he was interacting with people online and it was helping him to better explain the word and articulate what was coming in, like we've done stuff we've where done we've that taken we're taking in live feedback, questions. taking live questions, and it's helped us to interact with the body, which is what that purpose is for, to come around the word with the gathered body, then I would say that's great. The thing is, if you watch this whole video, we see the fruit. <laughs> We and, see the fruit here, of, of what comes from their setup, and it's it's not it's not um, it's not God. But but it's here's the deal too. I want to be sensitive to this because if you're a part of our body, if you know you've been around. You, I'm I'm one that I like to uh, pull out the different costumes. I like to use yeah, different illustrations yeah. and have physical parts of. For this past Easter, I came out dressed like Marshall Mathers, right? And, right. And, yeah, um, that was pretty funny. And to make the part uh, and use that illustration from that and. Um, so I like there's there's a portion to use things as a bridge to um, use coming th things coming to people. You see that in the scriptures. You see Paul doing that. You see Jesus doing that. Um, you see it throughout the scriptures where where God allowed things. Uh, like you you've heard me say before, there's no instruments of Hebrew origin. Yeah, there's no instruments of Hebrew origin, but yet you see in the Psalms where the psalmist write and ascribe for certain instruments to be used in praise mm -hmm. um, of the God. Um, Primarily at that time of the Hebrew people. Yeah, there, there, um, there wasn't any any instruments of, of Hebrew or there was no instruments that were dedicated to God until the Hammond B three. So the, <laughs> <laughs> until the Hammond B three. So we all know they yeah, got the spirit uh, in. Come on, come and, on. And if you're from if you're from the the Nordic spaces, then yeah. the acoustic, the yeah. acoustic, it makes the spirit move. So, uh, I, but, I uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's one of those deals where um, so there's there's always been the use of what's coming. To praise God and using that bridge, and yeah. so I'm I'm all for that. And sometimes in our zeal to make a bridge in the reach, we overreach. Yeah. And you know what? That's that's a part of ministry too, man. That's that's a part of. That's why we're man. We're fallible, and so I I, I don't want to come across as too hard on this. Also, though, in this, they played the un. Edited, edited version, version of, the, of song. the song. And that's that's my thing. I'm a secular artist. I'm a secular artist that makes music with a sacred message. I got a song called Yeshua. It, it says, uh, they, uh, they say I got to find a claim to fame. Go out and get designer on my frame. They say you ain't a thing without a name. Well, Yeshua, which is, which is Jesus' Hebrew name, right? It's, yeah. And so like, those are some lyrics. This is the song that they played. Here's, here's how the verse go. And they play all the way through the verse. Now hit the dance flow and bend your back low. She do it with no hands. Now stop, pop, and roll. I'm smoking bubble. Ho. Yeah, they in trouble. Oh, I like the way she moved and undercover. Ho. Come on now. What are we playing? What are we doing? I, I am all about using secular music. We have, we have done Kendrick Lamar. We've reviewed Kendrick Lamar stuff on here. We've, if you're using it for the purpose of the gospel, they are literally just praise dancing. And shouting to, so, to not, this ain't even just secular. It's, hold up, it's hold up. Let me go back. Uh, no, I'm going to go back because you you just assaulted something. And I want to go back and defend. Okay. Uh, you said that they were praise dancing. Oh, yeah. No, they were dancing. They were dancing. You're right. Uh, because there's some people who, uh, praise dancing is actually a ministry that You're right. they do as a part of the body. Um, and bringing forth the praise of the body before a good, perfect, and holy God. 
and man, they're hard. And like, so I don't, I am not going to assault what they, right. what, what happens. And you know what? I can't do it. I like, I, I, nope. I ain't got what they got. Nope. They are gifted in different ways than me. They're artistic yep. and it is beautiful. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and so, um, no, no, they were dancing. They were dancing. Just like there's a difference <laughs> between singing and praising, singing and praising. Like, right. And it's like, they, I was like, how are you playing? And people just, whoo, whoo, shouting. I'm like, what, what? What are we doing? What are we doing? But it's like, it's, man, you came up with this title, right? The, the danger in being a good storyteller. Mm -hmm. And that's part of that where it's like, when you can convince someone of anything, to, to use another common, like, there, was a, there was this line that Drake had that I, that I used to quote ignorantly, but uh, that, uh, man, it's hard to find the one when, when everyone will come with you, right? It's hard to find the one when everyone will come with you. And when you're in a position where you can convince people of almost anything, that this is good, this is good for you, you run the risk of not having anyone to push back on you or to tell you, hey, buddy, that is a, that's a bad decision. Oh, like, that, that is a bad far. decision. But you, hold up. Uh, so um, you heard me say this before. You need a pump the brakes friend. You need a pump the brakes you friend. You need a pump the brakes friend. You need a friend that's telling you like, hey, no. You need to pump the brakes on that. Mm -mm. That's a little bit too far. <laughs> um, like, hey, I get where you're going, but no, like, you know, like when somebody we, did, we done, bro, we've been in a run through, and I said some things because I ride, I ride the edge. Yeah. I do. I ride the edge. It's it's part of my personality. I ride the edge, and I said something. You're like, hey, hey, hey. We, were, I was in the middle of preaching my sermon in the run through, and Jonathan said, hey, 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 no, <sighs> we can't do that. I was like, but I was just, he's like, you gotta change that word. I was like, okay. And I, I switched it up. And I was like, I ain't see. Okay. But I was like, I was like, okay, I got you. I got you. If it's coming across some kind of way, you gotta have somebody to tell you pump the brakes. Slow and you know down. what? And here's the deal. You know I'm not one of those like, we gotta make everybody feel comfortable right. uh, no. ministers or anything like that. But I I try not to be um intentionally offensive, yeah. right? And so, and then sometimes it's just, you grow, uh, I, I tell a story, um, the church I started out in ministry at, uh, we, I was the youngest person on, on, on the ministerial staff and I'm on the ministerial team, and uh, one day somebody stood up uh, in a Bible study or something like that, one of the older people, and said that the King James Version was the only real version of the Bible. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Okay. At this time, right, um, I was like, okay, my next message is going to be from the King James. And so I, my next message, I preached from the passage where Jesus came riding into the city on um, a donkey. But if you read the King James, it says- It's not the language you use. It says, I ass. Yep. And so I actually entitled a sermon, That Ass. <laughs> and I said ass like probably 30 to 40 times in the first five minutes of that sermon to get my point across. Ooh. And I watched on a Sunday morning how all those who proclaimed that the King James was the only real version of the Bible squirmed. And I'm like, you well, if that's the case, you should have... No discomfort in this because I'm only using the word. And the whole sermon was about, and I was talking about how the world has better ass than the church because um, the world does a better job of carrying its message than the church uh, actually does. But you know what? That was lost in the, yeah. in the offensiveness of how I did it. Now, I totally only used the words that were recorded in that in translation of... of the scriptures, and I was trying to make a point, but the point that, that was really made was how immature I was. And you know, mm -hmm. and, and it was how immature I was and how not ready I was to be in certain spots because mm. at that time, me getting the best of somebody I felt different than was more important than the yeah. unity yeah. and the edification of the body. Yeah. Yes. Did all the young adults laugh? Yes. Oh, yeah. did, did we sell a ton of tapes? That's when we sold cassette tapes. Did we sell a ton of cassette tapes that Sunday? Yes. Yeah. And I lost some credits in the bank mm -hmm. with those older members of the body because I showed I chose to show them up in that moment. And I remember that. Um, and I remember that from that moment. And I've taught that and used that story 
with people on my team going forward. Not just as a joke piece, but to teach them how I've learned from some of the errors I've made and how I've had to mature as I've gone along to say, I might be totally writing something and still do it in a way that doesn't edify and encourage and uplift the body and call and, and bring us closer together in unity. Yeah. And I, I, I think we have to consider that as we... We do. And maturity will help you define the win, right? Like, what's the win? Was the win getting over on somebody? Or was the win getting the message out? And it's like, that... Man, I used to, uh, I used to use the N word profusely growing up. That was my, that was like my word. It was like mm -hmm. my adjective for everything. It, it was a verb. It was a noun. It did it all. It was a super word, and that was what, that's what mm -hmm. I did. And I would use it. I had a very large social media uh, following, and I would use it on social media. And I had someone who I still love to this day. Um, we've had him on the podcast. He, he hit my inbox. And other, a lot of people hit my inbox, but when he hit my inbox, I really listened. And he was like, young man, when you use that word, I don't think you understand what people are hearing and what they're seeing. And there's a lot of us who support you who are not going to hear what you're saying because of this word and how it impacts us. And I was like, in word, please. Like, I, you know, I was, no, but I serious, I listened and I was like, because mm, I, I didn't like what you're saying. I couldn't see it at the time. Mm -hmm. But because of the respect I had for him, I was like, okay, maybe I'm missing something. I, I at least took the post down, but I was hot. I was mad and probably made another post about how I should be able to say whatever I want on my Facebook. But it, it wasn't until years later when I looked back in my memories and I was like, oh, oh no, that wasn't, that wasn't worth it. Like that wasn't worth it. And it was alienating people and it was making it harder for me to actually say what I needed to say and get across what I needed to get across because of my language. And it's like, I can, ha I can have the right to use it, but everything that I have the right to do is not fruitful. It's not productive. So, like, one of your early, so when I first met you and you were, like, we were connecting, it, it had someone at the end. And I was like, I can't share this, man, because mm -hmm. this piece on her, I can't share this because I can't rock that word. Uh, one of my nephews, uh, is he raps and creates music, and one of my, my first cousins, and I want to support them in everything they do. My nephew started a clothing line. And I bought some of his stuff because I'm his I'm his uncle, and I, I believe that's how you do. As your family, I'm rocking I'm you rocking. a friend. Yep. I'm buying some of your stuff. I'm gonna right. rock you. I'm gonna support you for sure. But I could never like share his music because of mm -hmm. the content of it. Yep. And I just like, hey, that that goes too far. I can't. I can't. I can't. And and so um, it's one of those deals, man, where we have to look at those things. We have to we have to judge what the win is. Also, the win can't be. Sometimes we do things in ministry because we think, and this is, man, this is bad. This is going to draw the crowd. It's going to get a lot of attention. And, yep. and this is bad. And you get, a, a sign of maturity is you get out of those stages where you're like, I can't do things because this brings a bigger crowd. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, like, and like hitting this song, like I remember being in the choir and having um, a young musician who was super talented in church choir, and he used to slyly mix in R&B songs mm -hmm. into, like, while he's playing up under the pastor, while the pastor would be right. speaking during, you know, for offering or whatever else, and, and all the young adults would be kind of, like, giggling because the older people didn't know. And then, at a certain point, even us young adults were like, you know, this really is not right. Not right. No. And so, I just... Man, a sign of maturity is where you grow. And, and here's the deal, too. We have to give some grace and mercy to the youthfulness of every generation to grow through those moments and not throw them away when those things happen and continue to walk with people because we all went through that stage. Yep. Um, and we yep. have to learn, but we have to, we have to have environments where people can learn those things and mature from those lessons mm -hmm. um, without totally casting them away or totally um, or speaking to them in a way that totally discourages them and gets them to walk away like their gifts are not welcome um, in the body. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the way we combat that is to make sure that our spaces are our spaces that are open to creativity 
and different um, things yeah. than what we're used to. If yeah. not, they're going to keep exper- they're going to keep experimenting with things out there because we don't let them use their gifts in a creative fashion in, in here. here. I was going to say that. Like that's the other thing is this was a misstep. This just wasn't it. This was not it. And he really they really needed to be some checks in place where someone's able to tell them it's not it before it hit the internet, right? But um there is still nuance in using the secular and bringing in good illustrations and having creative things. And it's often the younger, less mature minds that are going to go that direction. And you need that. You need people to push the bounds and you need people with more wisdom and maturity to go, hey, that's good. This is too far. But here's another. I want to go here, though. William Murphy is not a young guy. Here's another. Um, Being a part of your leadership team being a certain age shouldn't be a requirement for that. Mm. And I feel like part of what happened here was they, he might, I, I bet you because of just what he's talking about, I that he know. maybe heard the song um, watching a, a, a game or right. a commercial or yep. something like that and just heard this little clip, not mean. knowing the words what that were in this song mean? and thought, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to include this because this will draw the youth. This will uh, this will yep. hit with the youth mm-hmm. and young adults. Where if he would have had some young people on the his team. team that he could run some of this stuff by, they would have said, "Hey, Pastor, I respect you a lot, and I man, I love that you want to connect with us. This ain't oh, yeah. it. That ain't it because of some of the things in there. And yeah, often, yeah. like, so I, I man, it's crazy out here." A room full of guys trying to discern, discern how to best minister to women. <laughs> and they'll never bring women into the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, a room, f- it's so easy to do that with so many um, just different populations and groups to not have that representation in the room while we're making plans for how to connect with them. Mm. And not asking their input or running anything nope. by them. And then being surprised when we get that smoke. We become tone deaf because we don't really have the perspective that's needed to make the decisions that are going forward. Uh, man, and that's, that is so good, man. Um, man, loving this. What, what do you guys think of this type of content, man? Uh, <laughs> would y'all play Walk It Out in your church? Please say no. At the end of the video, <laughs> yeah, they start swag surfing. And so uh, I just want to let you know that, uh, no, we're, 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 we won't be doing that at Social Hot Chris. No. And listen, there are alternatives. Get connected with some younger people. Part of the project that, that John was talking about was me trying to create an alternative for what was out there and not having really any, any sort of oversight to go like, hey, this is good, but you're actually about to alienate the same audience that you're trying to speak to. Or I was only able to speak to people at my maturity level. And it actually limited where I was at, man. And so those collaborations are so important. And there are alternatives out there. Get with us. We can we can share some yes. with you if you need that. But man, like, comment, subscribe. Share this with somebody that you think may have an interesting opinion. Even if they disagree with us, man. We want to hear it. We want to have those conversations um, as we break these things down in the intersection. <laughs>